sparklings. So today I wanted to talk about a little bit of Halloween history. I figured that this would be a greatly appreciated video, especially in light of Halloween being just around the corner, even if the entire month of October has been considered Halloween. So Halloween has kind of a long, assorted, and a little bit of a confusing history. So from my understanding, this is the part that everybody assumes but can't exactly pinpoint, which is the concept of Samhain being a druidic ritual taking place at the end of the month of October, including human sacrifice, animal sacrifice, bonfires, effigies, all of this stuff, about uh, at the beginning of the modern era, so around like just before the CE era, but in the BC area. Anyway, uh, they've gotten proof that yes, there was probably druidic practices around this time, but they haven't been able to pinpoint precisely whether or not human sacrifice really happened or if it was just reflections of Roman and considered non-savage people um, saying that savage people did in fact do human sacrifice. They couldn't get exact proof on that one. Uh, based off of the research that I have done, I'm sure other people have done different research that will prove that yes, it happened, but it was kind of not a common practice holiday for a really long period of time. Fast forward up until about the 14th or 15th century and you start getting a little bit of a celebratory time at the end of October going into the beginning of November, this kind of weird gray area that was kind of a revelry night. And part of it also aligned with Guy Fawkes Day, uh, which was a popular holiday within the UK. And I believe it still is today, not that I've ever been to the UK to be able to acknowledge whether or not it is, but from my understanding it still is. And to celebrate All Saints and All Souls Day, which was a very Christian type of uh, holiday, which would be honoring the dead and honoring the saints, which nowadays has more or less morphed into Dia de los Muertos within the Latin America tradition. So Halloween was not a regularly celebrated event put onto a calendar until the beginning of the 20th century. And it has that feeling that it's been around for so long that of course we've celebrated it on the 31st of October every single year for as long as recorded history when it was more like not until around 1910 was it recognized as a holiday. Uh, the concept of it being called Samhain, which is an Irish word, didn't start until, I don't know, a little bit later. I'd say, if I can remember correctly, it's closer to the 17th or 18th century. And you ended up getting a lot of these little things that ended up becoming a longer term part of the culture and of the holiday, which include turnip lanterns um, that children would carry around, so hollowed out turnip turnips with candles in them, which later kind of morphed into jack-o'-lanterns, which was based off of the mythology of effigies to scare away evil spirits. There was always kind of a weird um, uh, atmosphere about the end of the month and going into the beginning of the winter as well, which is part of why it has so much of the thinning in the veil concept behind it. Uh, the idea to be able to dress up kind of started a little bit later as well. For a long time it was almost a holiday used more for predicting fruitful marriages than it was for spooks and scares. You would have various parlor games that implemented cracking chestnuts to see if you could find a suitable mate and all these different things where it was like a premature dating time for teenagers. Since a lot of times you didn't have girls and boys interacting very much around that time period. It was also a night of mischiefs. So around that time frame, because it, the 31st was not a specific day at that point, but around that end of October, early November, you'd end up getting a lot of young males that would go out and wreak all kinds of havoc on everything as teenage boys are wont to do. But because of the time of year, it was kind of a, a socially accepted concept, especially when you move it to the US at the, I don't know, the mid 19th century, when you'd get a lot of college students participating in it as a part of type of college hazing, hazing right? And it would include putting furniture on roofs, stealing fence gates, egging houses, and all kinds of like minor mischief. Typically no one was hurt. Sometimes you would have accidents, but it was a lot of minor mischief that authorities just couldn't keep up with. And so it was just sort of agreed upon that, oh, fuck it, we'll just deal with this later. 
and a mentality because who has the energy to write out citations to hundreds of teenage boys? Then you start going into the 20th century and it gains more popularity. It starts taking on the term of Halloween over Hallowmas, um, and All Hallows Eve being the Eve before Hallows, which is All Souls Day, and it was a very holy type of holiday. It was very Christian, and it's kind of interesting to think of people uh, believing it to be super not Christian. and. In a lot of ways it isn't, but in some ways it really is, and all of that, that whole souls concept is pretty thoroughly Christian, which is not really my thing. But it's kind of interesting to see this evolution of history. When you start getting farther into the 20th century, it becomes a little bit closer to what we associate it with now. It becomes a night of mischief, it becomes a night of magic, it becomes a night of partying. And it was always more of an adult holiday, but then they started Kind of dumbing it down a little bit for marketing reasons, making it more of a kid-friendly holiday, they started putting it on the calendar as a way to sell candy. Because oftentimes the, the little mischief makers could be appeased with some kind of gifts in the early forms of trick-or-treating. And then you get to where we are now, where it's become an immensely commercially successful holiday where people like being scared, it's acceptable to be a misfit and a weirdo, and you can propensate horror movies more than ever. It became a mostly popular concept, I think, after John Carpenter's Halloween, because yes, of course, Halloween was a thing, but it really gained its commercial appeal on the level it is now at the late 70s, partially due to his film. But it's kind of an interesting history that isn't precisely what you'd think it would be. Most of the information that I've been telling you came out of this book that I got a while ago, Halloween from Pagan Ritual to Party Night by Nicholas Rogers. It's a rather interesting read and it covers a lot. It covers the beginning and then the Christian elements and then the move to America and whatnot. It's still not a widely recognized holiday in a lot of countries. It's a, it's mostly an American and Canadian and a little bit Irish English thing, but in a lot of countries they don't celebrate it, especially south of the equator where it is not going to be um, the midway point between the uh, fall equinox and the winter solstice. And so it doesn't really exist so much south of the equator. Anyway, a little rambly, as ever, but uh, I hope this gives you a little bit of perspective on where Halloween came from. Till next time, darklings.